Now let's talk about work energy theorem. So according to work energy theorem, it is stated that the work done by all the forces on a body is equal to change in kinetic energy of the body. Okay, so let's assume to say we have got an object, that object is moving. So if this object is moving, they are saying that all the forces which are acting in this object is supposed to be equal to change in kinetic energy. So as it is moving, okay, there is kinetic energy. So there is change in kinetic energy in that case. So we can say that the work done is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. And we know that the change in kinetic energy is the kinetic energy in final minus the kinetic energy initial. Okay? Now, let's assume to say this object is moving, then there is only one force which is acting. Okay? So if there is only force which is acting, meaning that the work done by that force is equal to change in kinetic energy. If, if it's just the, uh, the friction force which is acting, we're going to say that the work done by the friction force is going to be equal to change in kinetic energy. So in short, when we're talking about the work energy theorem, we're talking about the work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So all the forces which are present at that particular point, they are going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay? So let's assume to say uh, we want to find we have an object. Okay? Then there is a force which is pushing this object in this direction. The friction is opposing the motion. Meaning that for us to, to conclude to say the work done is equal to change in kinetic energy, then we, we are supposed to say the work net. The work net is supposed to be equal to change in kinetic energy. So this work net is going to be, the work net is the sum of the work done by the applied force minus, or let me say plus, the work done by the friction force. And we talked about this. Okay? Now, if there is only one force which is present at that point, then you're going to say that the work done by that force is equal to change in kinetic energy. That is work energy theorem. So let's say we have got um, this question which is saying, a police investigator examined the scene of an accident involving two cars, measures 72 meters long skid mark of one of the car, which, is, which nearly came to a stop before colliding. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the labor and the pavement is about 0 0.8. Estimate the initial speed of the car assuming a level load. So if this is the level load, okay, they're saying that the distance from this point to this point is 72 meters. Then this car was coming to rest, therefore the final velocity is zero. We want to find the initial velocity. They are saying that there was friction. They are okay, they're just mentioning about friction only, meaning that the only force which is present at this point is just the what the friction force. Meaning that the work done, we're going to use work energy theorem. The work done by the friction force is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. So work done by the friction force is going to be the kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial. So we know that work is a friction times force or times the displacement. But since the friction force was opposing the motion, we expect it to be negative. So it's going to be negative friction force times the distance is equal to the final velocity is zero. We don't expect to have the final velocity. We're going to have this. So in um, in general, we're going to have negative and negative will cancel. We're going to have mu k times the normal force times g times d, sorry, which the distance has to be equal to half mv initial squared. So we don't have mass, meaning that this normal force is mg times d is equal to half mv squared. Let's cancel the mass. Mu k times g d will be half v initial squared. Let's do times 2 everywhere to get rid of the half. So we're going to see that we're going to have 2 mu k 
GD will be equal to V initial squared. We get the square root of both sides. Square root of both sides. V initial will be equal to the square root of 2 times mu times G times D. Let's plug in the values. So our V initial will be 2 times the mu value is uh, 0 0.8 times G 9.8 times D which is uh, 72. So 2 times 0 0.8 times um, 9.8 times 72. The answer is fine. The square root, I'm getting 33.6. So my initial velocity meaning is at 3.6 meters per second. So this is how you work out some problems which involves work energy theorem. Okay.